dear aspirants greetings from e content development center majlis arts and science college puramannur this is me shalini shankar assistant professor and head department of commerce is joining with you with an informative topic from the subject income tax law and accounts that is determination of residential status of a person having different travel history let's check the learning outcome by watching this video the learners will be able to understand calculate the residential status of a person with a different travel history so before discussing the topic i will tell you the basic terms used throughout the video one of the important terms is assessee defined under section 2 subsection 7 assessee means a person who is liable to pay tax or any sum of money to the government under income tax act 1961 person defined under section 2 subsection 31 of income tax act 1961 tax is payable by a person a person may be a natural person or an artificial person generally persons include the following an individual a hindu undivided family shortly called as huf a company a firm an association of persons or body of individuals a local authority and every artificial juridical person that may be an idol a deity or a university or a public corporation assessment year defined under section 2 subsection 9 of income tax act 1961 assessment year means the period of 12 months commencing on the first day of april every year and ending on 31st march of the next year it is the year in which assessment is made on the income of the previous year previous year defined under section 3 of income tax act previous year means the financial year immediately preceding the assessment year it is the year in which income is earned so these are those technical words to be aware to learn this topic so let's enter into the cream of the topic that is determination of residence status of individual huf firm association of persons body of individuals company and artificial juridical person the incidence of tax or tax liability of a person depends upon the residential status of a person residential status of an assessee is determined with reference to his residence in india during the previous year so let's see the residential status of an individual assessee defined under section 6 subsection 1 residential status of an individual may be ordinarily resident not ordinary resident and non resident all these three status are shortly called as or nor and nr the res residence status of an individual assessee is defined by taking into consideration the following conditions that is basic conditions and additional conditions first of all we can check what is basic conditions there are two basic conditions the first one is he has been in india in the previous year for a period of 182 days or more or he has been in india for at least 365 days during the four previous years preceding the relevant previous year and in india for at least 60 days during the previous year so in short we can say the assessee have to complete 182 days of stay in india during the relevant previous year or he have to complete at least 365 days of total stay out of four previous years preceding the relevant previous year and should have 60 days of stay during the relevant previous year so these are the explanation about the basic conditions then we can move on to the few things in case of 60 days stay mentioned in the second basic condition have to be read as 182 days so let's see the ex exceptions to the rule of 60 days stay in india during the previous year there are two basic conditions the first one is he has been in india 
in the previous year for a period of 182 days or more or he has been in India for at least 365 days during the four previous years preceding the relevant previous year and is in India for at least 60 days during the previous year. So in short we can say the assessee have to complete 182 days of stay in India during the relevant previous year or he have to complete at least 365 days of total stay out of 4 previous years preceding the relevant previous year and should have 60 days of stay during the relevant previous year. So these are the explanation about the basic conditions regarding individual. But in few cases the 60 days stay mentioned in the second basic condition have to be read as 182 days. So let us see the exceptions to the rule of 60 days stay in India during the previous year. They are an individual who is a citizen of India and leaves India in any previous year for the purpose of employment or as a member of crew of an Indian ship must have stayed in India for at least 182 days during the previous year instead of 60 days. <coughs> If any citizen of India or a foreign nation of Indian origin who is living outside India came on a visit to India in the previous year, he must have stayed in India for at least 182 days during the previous year instead of 60 days. So that is all with regard to exceptions. And the other conditions to be considered for determining the residency status of an individual is additional conditions. They are. He has been resident in India in at least 2 out of the 10 previous years preceding the relevant previous year and he should have been in India for at least 730 days in all, all during the 7 previous years preceding the relevant previous year. So to become a resident the individual assessee have to satisfy any one of the basic conditions and both additional conditions. If the assessee satisfy any one of the basic condition but fails to satisfy both additional conditions means his status will become not ordinary resident. If he fails to satisfy none of the basic conditions then he is treated as non-resident. Next we can check the residency status of Hindu undivided family HOF defined under section 6 subsection 2 of income tax act 1961. Just like individual status, the HUIF also divided into ordinary resident, not ordinary resident and non-resident. If the control and management of its affairs situated wholly or partly in India during the relevant previous year and take the karta satisfies both additional conditions applicable to individual, then the HUIF is treated as ordinarily resident HUIF. Karta is the head of the Hindu undivided family. He is the senior most person. If the control and management of its affairs is situated wholly or partly in India, but the Karta fails to satisfy the additional conditions applicable to individual SSC, then he is become not ordinary resident HUF. The control and management of its affairs situated wholly outside India, then the HUF is a non-resident one. Hope you all are clear so far. Next we can move through the determination of a residency status of a company defined under section 6 subsection 3. A company may be either a resident or non-resident. It won't be a not ordinary resident just like individual associate Hindu undivided family because company is an artificial person so it will be either OR or NR. A company is said to be resident if it is an Indian company or during the previous year the place of effective management shortly called as poem is situated in India then it is a resident. A company is said to be non-resident if it is not an Indian company and the poem is situated outside India. Now what is poem? Poem means place of effective management, means place where key management and commercial decisions necessary for the conduct of business of an entity is made. Next we can determine the residency status of a firm AOP or BOI. 
they may be ordinary resident or non resident but cannot be not ordinary resident a resident a firm aop or boi is a resident if the control and management of its affairs is situated wholly or partly in india non resident a firm aop or boi is non resident if the control and management of its affairs is situated wholly outside india next we can see the residency status of every artificial juridical person it may be either or or nr the artificial persons control and management of its affairs is situated wholly or partly in india then it will be or if the control and management is situated wholly outside india then it will be a non resident so you will get more clarity while going through a few illustrations illustration 1 mr tom left for canada on 15th may 2016 after staying in india for 10 years 10 continue continuous years he came back on 1st september 2018 determine his residential status for the assessment year 2019 20 this is the illustration so while getting a problem like this for university examinations first of all you have to identify the relevant previous year Here in this case the previous year is starting from 1st April 2018 and ends on 31st March 2019 that is the year preceding the given assessment year then we have to record his travel history like date of coming and leaving the home country and total days of stay during the relevant previous year so the solution will be Mr Tom was in India during the previous year 2018-19 for 212 days he hence he satisfies the first basic conditions he left India in 2016 after staying in India for 10 years hence he satisfies both additional conditions also hence Mr Tom is adjudged as a resident in India so to conclude we can say that determination of a residential status of a person is very important before going for income tax calculation if it it always determines the tax burden of a person if it went wrong then their tax calculation will go wrong thank you see you again